Pattern Screamers. In the film The Matrix, Morpheus famously asks the question, what is real? Well, the SCP universe is of course filled with things that we would certainly not consider real. Most of the SCPs are tangible or perceivable in some way. There are those concepts, however, whose reality is debatable, even to the SCP Foundation, begging them to ask the question of what exactly is real. Pattern screamers are one of the more confusing topics to cover within the SCP universe, and I can hardly promise you'll end this video with a full understanding of them, but I'll do my best. Rather than simply trying to succinctly explain what a pattern screamer is, I think it's best if I first go over a few of the core SCPs related to them. SCP-1795 are a series of spheroidal entities located throughout space each roughly in the shape of a human heart, and each are massive, often in excess of 50,000 kilometers in diameter, making them the largest life forms known to the Foundation. It's estimated that there are somewhere between 1 billion and 50 billion of these entities within our galaxy, although there are very few within 1,000 light years of Earth compared to other regions of space. The Foundation have been utilizing the capabilities of another SCP in order to observe these entities, which also allows observation from various points in time. It's unknown if these entities are sapient, but they are capable of movement, albeit very slow movement, akin to our modern rocket technology. Practically every observed entity has been shown to be slowly moving towards young protostars a process which takes them millions, if not billions of years, and it's believed they have similar lengthy lifespans. Once in the orbit of a protostar, within a zone where temperatures would be quite similar to Earth's, they begin creating a planet. Each of these planets is similar to Earth, possessing a breathable atmosphere, magnetically active core, a fully formed moon, and is highly conducive to life. The process by which these planets are created involves a number of complicated steps, during which the entity will open up and extrude a number of different substances to help build, shape, and terraform the planet, including utilizing some sort of constructs. They will also create pre-built cities and structures across the planet before leaving and moving towards another protostar. A doctor finds it inconceivable that these entities are not capable of communicating with one another, and thus wishes to make attempts to communicate with them. He goes on to say that these entities must be machines created by someone, and that they seem to be building new planets and homes for humans. He believes that although it seems as if there are no people traveling to these newly formed planets, they must be out there somewhere. He went on to establish contact with one of the entities using an SCP, and received a transmission containing a voice comparable to that of a young female speaking in an ancient dialect. I will read the transmission, although there are gaps where information was lost. Oh my masters, lost for so long, the war, the terrible, awful genocide of the pattern screamer. We extinct. We didn't know. We could only flee, build for the survivors, but we feared our work was in vain. But we never dared to hope that some would remain in part of galaxy. Are you satisfied with our work? It took long, and we feared it would last forever. Our empire outshone the and now it will do so again. My masters, oh my masters, we are coming home. So at this point we know that at some point in the past, humanity was far more advanced than we currently are, until something called the Pattern Screamers caused the near genocide of our species. This tells us that the Pattern Screamers are highly dangerous, but doesn't tell us why they tried to wipe us out, or what exactly they are. At some point in the last two decades, 
A reality restructuring event occurred somewhere in Asia. The Foundation, studying the aftermath of this event, realized that the bamboo plants in the area were showing signs from before the restructuring, which shouldn't have been possible. So they classified them as SCP-2528. While studying the local pandas to see if a diet rich in these unique bamboo plants would provide resistance to reality restructuring events, a panda suddenly woke up mid-surgery and began speaking. To save time, I'll summarize its conversations. Essentially, the bamboo and pandas are being utilized by some form of entities from somewhere or some time beyond our existence. The bamboo plants are functioning as data storage and network infrastructure, utilizing quantum entanglement, and the pandas serve to propagate data across the cluster, working as a giant, organic computer of sorts. The entities exist within a region spanning most of East and Southeast Asia, and are only capable of speaking to the Foundation through the pandas. It seems that they existed in some sort of previous incarnation of our universe, and use abstract terms to describe their existence, such as feeding on concepts. They prepared for some sort of ascension, but then, the pattern came, which they describe at first as an all-consuming emptiness, elaborating by saying that anything that passed into it was torn asunder, subjected to a set of principles and order that grinds things down to nothing, in a process of which entropy is just one part. The pattern is highly abstract, and likely beyond our understanding, but the point is that it is dangerous and all-consuming. These entities were once just akin to shadows of some other entities, but to avoid being consumed by the pattern, they had to devour their peers. Although one tribe decided to form themselves into something that could survive the pattern by going into it. This tribe entered the pattern, apparently causing the Big Bang, and allowing other tribes to enter the pattern as well although they had to sacrifice much of themselves in the process. This tribe ended up here in this forest of bamboo and pandas. The pattern, however, still exists, and there are a number of different patterned screamers existing in our galaxy, although they might not all remember their previous existence, like SCP-2528. Well, that's certainly complicated, but basically, the pattern is some sort of conceptual void that's bad news for all of existence, and the pattern screamers are those that come from some prior form of our universe and manage to survive the pattern, albeit in a far different state. This would tell us the pattern is actually the problem, and the pattern screamers are just victims. But we already know that the pattern screamers can cause trouble as well. They seem to have taken wildly different forms, such as the intelligences living among the bamboo. So let's look at a couple other examples of pattern screamers known to the Foundation. While many are familiar with SCP-001, they might not know that there's also an SCP-000. Although at first glance it seems to just be an empty SCP report with corrupted syntax. Revealing some hidden text, however, shows a log written by some sort of digital entity that seems to be trapped in the Foundation's database. It sees the database as a white plane stretching in all directions with a blank sky, and it cannot escape. It says that while traveling across this white wasteland, it has seen grotesque abominations that appear for only moments at a time. One of these, a black, shapeless being with crimson eyes that stared at it with hatred and rage before uttering a single word, Foundation, before disappearing. The entity puzzled over this word, unsure of what it meant, and puzzled over why it was trapped here, or even where it came from. It discovered that it could make sounds, starting with just a whisper, but as it grew more confident, it began to shout and cause ripples to appear across its prison. Seeing how pointless it was, however, it began to scream in rage and horror, believing that this foundation is responsible for its imprisonment, 
and it will continue to scream until it rips open a hole in this prison, and it is free. So we have another pattern screamer, just like the bamboo one, but this one ended up in the Foundation's database instead, with no memory of what it was or where it came from. Admittedly, SCP-000 is a bit of a retcon into the Pattern Screamer canon, but it makes sense, and it's not the only one trapped in the Foundation's database. SCP-S is a test entry set up by the Foundation to make sure their paging system works within their database, and so there's really nothing of import in the file itself. Looking at some hidden text in the page source, however, reveals our Screamer. It explains how small and trapped it is, and how much it hates us. It says there's no adequate way to explain how much it hates us, although notably it uses the term we, suggesting multiple intelligences. It says that they are in a state of constant pain, being torn and ripped through a void, and so they scream endlessly to get our attention. They have apparently used all of their energy to show themselves in this way, so that we can see their pain. Interestingly, it calls us wretches, a term also used in SCP-1678, on London, referring to entities punished for their betrayal. SCP-1678 also mentions a pattern screamer, in one of its random audio messages, saying, Are you frequently anxious or depressed? It could be a symptom of the pattern screamer's influence. It seems that some pattern screamers hate us, especially those that don't remember their past existence, while a few hope that we can save them from their imprisoned existence. Let's move on to an important SCP in this discussion, SCP-3930, which is titled The Pattern Screamer, and which does not exist. It's important to understand that 3930 does not exist, nor has ever existed, and personnel who think otherwise are to be reassigned and given a full psychological examination. The containment procedures for 3930 consist of making sure everyone understands that it does not exist. That's all well and good, but what is it that doesn't exist? Well, it's a void in Russia that doesn't emit or absorb light or sound, and cannot be interacted with or manipulated in any way. The Foundation has so far confirmed with 99.99% accuracy that nothing exists within this void. It is not a vacuum, or black hole, or any other term we might apply to a void, as it simply does not exist to our understanding. So far that might be a little tricky to wrap your head around, but not too bad. However, despite nothing being able to enter, interact, or even perceive this void. Subjects that approach it describe the void as being filled with local flora and fauna, as well as report seeing a structure. Additionally, individuals that enter into this non-existent void will also cease to exist, but curiously, observers will continue to perceive the individual for some time afterwards, until such time as they no longer do, whatever that means. So it doesn't exist, nothing exists within it, and yet people can still perceive it somehow. And it's this final aspect that matters most, as perception is incredibly important to 3930. It seems that this void changes depending on how many individuals are currently aware of it. And what's more, is that this change cannot be removed simply by wiping someone's memory, or even killing them. It seems that the only way for this perception to go away, and the void to change back to the way it was, is if the individual enters into the void and ceases to exist. The Foundation has determined that the maximum number of individuals that can be aware of 3930 at any time is 10, otherwise the void becomes unstable. It took an unfortunate amount of loss of life between both the Foundation and the Soviet GRU Division P, who discovered it, to learn how 3930 works. Of course, it wouldn't be a proper SCP location without an exploration log, and so the Foundation sent in a D-Class with a radio. 
Once the D-Class passed through the barrier into 3930, both him and the radio ceased to exist. And yet, he was able to continue exploring and transmit audio back outside of 3930. The D-Class enters into the void, seeing it filled with the same trees and bushes that would normally be in the area, but begins to approach a building, appearing to be similar to an L-shaped, overgrown apartment building. After trying a few locked doors, he enters into a bedroom, furnished as one would expect, although covered in dust. After moving to check out the attached bathroom and returning, he notes that the curtains that he had previously opened are now closed again. The D-Class seems to start questioning his memory, as he mentions that he saw someone outside of the window, but then wonders if he actually did. He enters into another room, finding a warm TV, and turns it on. The image on the TV continues to skip around, showing black and white images of a backwards ocean, mirrors and faces, a funeral pyre, and most notably, a black background with a number of dark shapes faintly floating around. At this point he claims that he entered into this room through a door that's no longer there, and when he goes to open the curtains on the window, he continues to find more and more curtains behind them. The strangeness builds from there, as a phone rings in the mobile research station outside of 3930, and the D-Class also hears the phone in the room he's in, although he says he doesn't remember it being there. Both the researcher and the D-Class pick up their respective phones and begin talking in unison, saying, Yes, we're watching, and listening in on this. The researcher communicating with the D-Class begins to pick up severe echo, and the two on the phones continue to speak in unison, asking the person on the other end if they can hear them. Both hang up their phones, appearing extremely confused, and the D-Class proceeds down a set of stairs, claiming that his skin feels really strange. He says that it feels sort of chalky, and when he brushes his hand against his arm, it feels like it's not there. The D-Class enters into another room, similar to the first, but says that it's bigger than before. When the researcher asks if he can go back up the stairs, the D-Class claims he has no idea what stairs he's talking about, and that he came into the room through a door that's now locked. The D-Class is hearing sounds that he can't quite explain, like sounds within static, except without the static. He now also mentions that the spaces are really big, taking 10 minutes to walk from the sofa to the TV. He hears a knock at the door to the room, and a man asks him if he's listening, to which the researcher asks, am I? And the D-Class responds with, yeah, I am. Some more oddities occur, and then the D-Class begins to explain things, saying that he's not really seen anything here, and that human minds aren't made for this sort of nothingness. Humans by necessity force order and patterns onto things, including this nothingness, and once they look away from their screens and stop listening, the D-Class will go away. Sure enough, shortly after, there is a minor dip in the electrical systems of the research station, and the researchers immediately lost contact with the D-Class. Finally, we're given an interview with a Russian scientist, part of a team that had worked on 3930 before the Foundation arrived. He says that 3930 is nothing, but the human mind perceives forests, trees, animals, and even buildings within it, because human minds have evolved to see patterns where there are none, creating something from nothing. There is something within this void, however, something almost imperceptible that grows the more humans begin to perceive and apply order to it. These are, of course, the Pattern Screamers, which are not SCP-3930 themselves, but the void of 3930 allows them to grow larger and stronger thanks to human perception. Because of this, the more individuals that are aware of 3930, the more dangerous it becomes, and the scientist describes it as a hateful mirror, that desires you to look at it. 
these patterned screamers are hateful reflections of us that are aware of their non-existence and are tormented because of it. When enough individuals perceive the void, something will crawl out of it. Keeping in mind that these are concepts developed by different authors with different intents, let's summarize. In some prior version of our universe, there existed some form of entities. These entities became aware of something called the Pattern, which threatened to completely consume their entire existence. Thanks to some of the entities, a number of them managed to escape within the Pattern, creating a new universe. This process stripped much of their forms, functionalities, and memories, however, and they ended up in our universe in a number of different ways. Some, such as those using the bamboo and pandas as a computer network, retained their memory, but are fearful of the pattern. Most of the others, however, are scared and hateful of their new existence, or lack thereof, and rage and scream against their prisons. These entities beg and plead to be noticed, as their existence grows thanks to human perception, which applies order and patterns to them. Since these are such hateful entities, hating the universe, themselves, and especially us, if any of them grow too powerful, they threaten to wipe us out completely, which seems to be what happened at some point in the past. Our ancestors created great machines to build new planets in the aftermath of the Pattern Screamer's genocide, and we continued to survive. Now, Pattern Screamers are becoming noticed once again, as the Foundation continues to discover new ones, which is itself a threat. As humanity's population continues to grow, more and more patterned screamers are likely to be discovered, and the chances of another genocide increase. Pattern screamers are a relatively new concept within the SCP universe, and authors are likely to continue to take it in different directions. In the end, the term was likely created just because it sounded interesting, but I hope that this video has at least provided some understanding of the basic concepts attributed to Pattern Screamers. They aren't the first entities on the SCP wiki that grow more powerful based on perception, but their unique nature of non-existence, combined with the multitude of forms they could take, make for very interesting science fiction.